Hello, everybody. Welcome to, yes, the Portland Conversations, a show that was started, uh, gosh, almost three years ago and never got off the ground. So here it is now. Why? Because we've got a special guest uh, here in the Newsbox studios. I'm really excited about this. Uh, we uh, we did not do the, uh, the coffee with curmudgeons today, but that's okay. We can do that. We'll, we'll be back on Monday. Uh, like I said, we wish uh, Jason well and hope everything's okay. But more importantly now, here on The Conversations, we have a special guest. A special guest is Neil Cohen. Neil Cohen is the primary songwriter, lead singer, and guitarist of War Show, Angels, and the Dead Stars on Hollywood. He's performed, produced, and remixed bands including Collide, Contagion, Patty Rothberg, Buzzcocks, The Dandy Warhols, Henry Rocks, UK Subs, Consolidated Black and Blue, and Sin Corporation. He is here to talk about his new project, Home on the Range, a farm animal benefit compilation CD and documentary film for the nonprofit Compassionate Farming Education Initiative. The album includes songs by Moby, Joan Jett, Yoko Ono, Bright Eyes, The Pretenders, Nellie McKay, Howard Jones, Princess Superstar, and The War Show Angels. Neil, welcome to Portland. Thank you. It's nice to be back here. It's a mouthful there. I that was actually... quite an intro you, that you gave me there. I have a lot to live up to Thanks now. Thanks yeah. to Wikipedia. <laughs> hopefully I've, it's I, true. I've, I've heard of him. Yeah. 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 Hopefully, hopefully some Pretty knowledgeable that. guy. Yeah. Hopefully hopefully, uh, all that was semi-accurate. I Yeah. I, Relatively. Well, I, it, it sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Some of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know... I, I have this uh, just just war show angels. Yes. So I actually had to phonetically spell it. It's a tongue twister. It is. Everyone. Anytime anybody ever has a band, what happens is is they hear the name of the band for the first time. Right. And then in their mind, they start to think about something else. And mm -hmm. then no matter what the, the name of your band is, it's gonna you're gonna have to correct them. Yeah. Because they're going to say, oh, what's what's the name of your band? Um, the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Right. Oh, they this and the And then you'll think it's something else, and then you'll have to correct them. But until you, you hear it enough times, people people um, will say, well, Warsaw? Warsaw, yeah. this, Warsaw. Yeah, I mean, that, that was that was the, the first thing that came to mind. I was like, oh, how, how nice. You, yeah. you, you named a band after a town in Poland. Yeah. That's, you know? <laughs> That was like, my. F that's the. That's the first one. And when I was in Dead Stars, people would say the Dead Starts or what on who who what. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, it just has to be repeated enough times, I guess. So we're still in that phase. So, so you're, you're from, Portland, New York. You're originally from New York. Yeah. And born then... in the born in the Bronx, actually in New York. I lived in Portland uh, in the '90s, and I guess you know that was a, that was definitely a good time for music. Um, I was in a band called Strongbox um, in the '90s, and then when I left, uh, 2003, I moved uh, back to New York City and kind of re reformed that band into Dead Stars on Hollywood. I guess sort of the tail end of of being in Portland, we did the Dead Stars. Um, we did a support show with uh, Guar for a Halloween ball. At with Rosal Guar. With Guar, yes. <laughs> uh, Roseland like, Theater. We played with Placebo. We played with a bunch of different bands. And there was a lot of cool music happening locally um, back then, 2000, 90s to 2003. Mm -hmm. And then there was a huge New York scene that exploded. Um, the Strokes and Interpol and Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. And there were a lot of great things going on. So we were kind of involved in a lot of that, uh, the the hubbub that was happening over there. Right. Well, there's just a, I don't know, there's such a resurgence of like the 90s Portland music scene. Like, what is it, a week ago? There was That's not a, a bad thing, though. A Dead Moon. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great. At City Hall. It's brilliant. Correct. So what? Oh well, not reunion, but it's a like tri a tribute. A it's tribute. a tribute. Yeah. Okay, a tribute. I saw a, a picture. There was a cake that had the Dead Moon mm -hmm. logo on. It was really cool. That's any time that a band's legacy can 
sustain itself and people remember that band it's a, a good record doesn't go away you know right. it just it just stays so anytime someone can artistically contribute to that pool of uh, music and and culture and people remember it that's a good thing whether they remember it in a bad way or a good way you've at least made a tiny tiny mark uh, you know in that moment and well, a record is like a snapshot in time and it's cool when that when that stuff comes back there's a lot of bands um kind of reliving some of that you know some of that heyday i got a chance to see uh, interpol do their first album in its entirety um, a couple of weeks back, they're on tour doing that, and it's it brought brought back a lot of good memories. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's good memories. It's you you know you you grow up, you have kids, have a family, you start taking them to Disney animated uh, Pixar films, and you I have the I, I can't say I've music, done that, you know? but yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, I remember that song from the '90s that's now Shrek is dancing around to, or something. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yes, I'm back in. I'm back in my chromatic. Are we mode. talking about Smash Mouth? I mean, what are we talking about I here? I, 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 I don't know. Because that, I, I would rather not hear that yeah, again. Yes, yes. So you are here back in Portland, though. Yes. And you're here promoting a project. I'm here promoting a project um, on behalf of CFEI, mm -hmm. uh, which is a 501c3 uh, vegan uh, educational nonprofit. Uh, the flagship project is called Home on the Range. Uh, it's a record album, a compilation with the artists that you had mentioned before. We mm -hmm. have Yoko, we have uh, Moby, Joan Jett, Pretenders, Bright Eyes, Howard Jones, Nellie Mackay. Um, so the, the, the project also comes with a companion documentary. So I'm here at the Portland Veg Fest, which is this weekend. Uh, we're doing two screenings of that film with a Q&A. Um, all in promotion of this project and the money that all the album sales and those proceeds go to fund four farm animal sanctuaries across the U.S. Now, farm animal sanctuary, for those people who maybe aren't um, as familiar with the compassionate sure, sure. farming and maybe the vegan lifestyle mm -hmm. yeah plant-based and vegan lifestyle uh, are, are these like uh, do they rescue farm animals they do or? they pull them from dangerous dangerous situations um sometimes they come from um factory farms they've escaped that fate some mm -hmm. of these animals can be found uh left on the side of the road oh. um different you know different emergency type situations these farm animal sanctuaries will provide shelter and medical care and things like that and they're also nonprofit as well so the funding the funding is is very important there's a lot of people that volunteer for these things and i wanted to come up with a project that would be a bit a bit broad using my background music and video and and um and a cause so that's how it came out of frustration, really. Like, what can I do? And I missed all those. I miss all those albums right. from back then. You know, that like there's a cause. Um, so I thought I'd I'd bring it back, um, and it it's it's turned out pretty cool. So these farm animal sanctuaries are receiving money from the sales of this album, and I worked with these people, and everyone graciously donated music and their time, um, and it's it's been a great ongoing project. So. I'm here this this weekend at the Expo Center, mm -hmm. and we're going to screen the film and going to do a Q and A. I'll be there, you know, with the CDs, and we have merchandise to raise money for uh, the organization and just spread awareness. Now, here's uh, this is a perfect segue into a lot of a lot of stuff. Here's the CD right here, the actual CD. Can you buy it digitally as well, or you it, can? Okay. Um, it's on all the you know okay. all the digital. Uh, channels that you would find at iTunes, Amazon. Um, and how much does a CD cost? Uh, it's a fifteen dollar donation. Fifteen dollar donation, so it's tax right. deductible, Which and the download the... I think is ten dollars or something like right. that. Um, we also used uh, 
Burnside Distribution, which is local, which is um, oh, great. part of Music Millennium. I noticed so, there was a CD Baby. There's a, a CD. Big, we use CD, CD Baby as well, local. also Portland. So, And then this money goes to Compassionate Farming Education Initiative. No, this CDFI. money, initially it goes to Compassionate Farming Education Initiative, but it is split four ways between the four sanctuaries that we The find. four actual yes. sanctuary so, farms. Yeah, so we will cut a check. We send them boxes of CDs that they uh -huh. can sell at their gift stores and um, promotion promotional uh, expos and stuff and then we just send them a check when the when the residuals so, get to you know quarterly or I don't do that end of it but right I know that the checks went out because I received several thank you notes so so you can just uh, <laughs> just buy a CD and listen to some good music and it's wh really, wherever the money goes you know it's, it's like it goes P into a positive place it's like PBS it's yeah. like you yeah. you donate fifteen dollars and you get a CD so I want to show you've got a little promo of the CD, which is really nice. Oh, okay. Online, so yes. I wanted to show them, so because you know us just talking about it. Right. No one been, wants to hear me talk about it. Well, I get it. You, we want to hear you talk about it, but it's probably not as exciting as watching this promo that's on here. This is Correct. like Joan Jett and Howard Jones. Yes. And, you know, Princess Superstar. Yeah. She's visually, she's yeah, she's so, pretty awesome. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at the uh, Home on the Range CD promo. That was exciting. 
that was a, oh i missed the sorry i missed the little t if it, we're gonna put, post the links anyway but uh that is the promo reel yes for this cd you're gonna go, want to go out and buy and then it's listen a, to the music and then uh you know farm animals are gonna live a good life so you're you're gonna just feel good all the way over you know, so tell me about how you put that together. You got Joan Jett, you got Moby, you got the Pretender, you got you got Howard Jones, you got people I actually even know. <laughs> that people that you know personally. Yeah. Well, no, no. no. Um, so, but we will soon, right? We'll, we'll absolutely we'll make connections and sure. You know. um, so it was a. It Wait, started at start okay. So it started really out of frustration. I wanted to do. I like the, the the benefit album mm -hmm. factor. I remember, you know, there was always a cause or some kind of a show happening where the a lot of artists shows, would get sure, together. Yeah. Uh, like here in Aid, you mm -hmm. know, you had Dio and mm -hmm. all those cool metal people doing. Anyway. Um, yes. So uh, I had planned to do a compilation. So I started, I started just with people I knew. And the first two people that I uh, asked uh, was Moby and Howard Jones, and immediately they said yes, great. So you just I, got him on I, the phone, like, hey. No, I was just at a I was at a party, and okay. Moby was there, and oh, hey, Moby, what's up? Well, you know, right. And I said, I have this idea, I want to run by you, and what do you think? And he said, great, you know, let's let's make it happen. I'll, you know, let's work on a song, let's do this. Mm -hmm. um, Howard, I emailed, um, having met him before, sweetheart, just he's. He's been a big proponent for animal rights for years and years. I remember hearing one of his songs um, on a PETA compilation, mm -hmm. you know, 20 odd years ago. Uh, so he's he's very much into that. Um, and I believe he had a, a vegetarian pet food company for a while. Oh, this wow. was back in England. <laughs> anyway, right. he, he's 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 very active in it and was very active with PETA. Um, Joan Jett is the same way. Right. Um, you know, very vegan. Uh, same with Chrissy Hind. Right. Um, right. So that was. Yeah, so I mean, it was really like, reaching at you know reaching out through a friend of a friend or a lot of the people I knew. Um, I worked with some people from Crass and the Buzzcocks and UK Subs and just did a lot of different. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of legwork and a lot of you know we have twenty one songs on there. Wow. So um, we have the color Fred. Um, he's from Taking Back Sunday. We have uh, Bright Eyes. We've got, um, we have Just Insane. Uh, a lot of different people. Nellie Mackay, another uh, very outspoken vegan um, activist. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the common thread here is that these are all artists who have been vegan lifestyle proponents of animal rights. Um, and proponents of peace. You know, and yeah. for me, Yoko Ono was... Like sure. a huge, you know, that was that was a huge turning point um, when she agreed to do that. Uh, so sweet and gracious, gracious. And she wrote me this lovely letter and actually gave us an unreleased song that no one's ever heard before about. Um, it was about a dog that John had given to Sean uh, for Christmas. And they had the, this dog on their family farm. Ode to Meadow. Ode to Meadow. And the dog, you know, had just disappeared one day, mm -hmm. run away or, you know, something Dogs unknown had happened. Something, mm -hmm. yeah, something had happened to the dog where the dog disappeared. And it's a very, you know, it's, it's a very contemplative song and it's very personal to her. And it had a lot to do with, you know, uh, John's gift to Sean of this dog for their mm -hmm. farm. Mm -hmm. So as soon as when that happened, I knew like we had something really special, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, did, so so did you did you email Yoko or were you just at a party and it's like, hey, I'm just uh, that was a little more difficult little... because she's like an apparition, right? You know, right. Um, I have seen her at different functions and things, but there's a certain way you have to sure contact her. She kind of has that you big, can... larger than life. There, nothing Yoko is done Ono's through email, I'll tell you name. that. There's nothing yeah. that's done through email. You have yeah. to actually, you have to be there and you have to write on paper. Right. To, Ooh. Do, to do that. Yeah. Ooh, actual yeah. letter on mm -hmm. parchment. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A, yeah. A she does not, she does pen, not email. Maybe. No, that's Got why she wrote, she wrote, yeah, and she wrote me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. 
and when I saw, you know, when I saw this letter, I just, wow, it was, it's really special. So, so, so you had to like maybe get a calligrapher, calligra, I can't even speak. See, this is Caligula. To, I love that. I know. What yeah. a great film that was. That'll, yeah, that'll be. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It's very relaxing. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, you write it on the parchment, and you you have to write. You have to actually write. Wax you have to write to her, mm -hmm. and you have to, and you have to put down exactly what right. you know this you know you have in mind. And so I know, uh, yeah, I remember Chrissy Hine being very outspoken, like oh, yeah. way back in the eighties. Yes, uh, Joan Jett. I had heard uh, not so much, but very, very like since the seventies or you know from yeah. day one. Yeah. Um, so really, that thread's there. Did, were there other artists that you wanted to get that that you couldn't quite get? Maybe that'll be the Home on the Range second part edition. Two. Part two. I have a different plan for part two. I probably won't do a full compilation like this again, mm -hmm. but I think we're going to do kind of an all-star band oh. and do a one song. Nice. Kind of thing. Kind of a... Yeah. Um, so there were, there were people that for whatever one reason or another are well, not on schedules. this first yeah. yeah oh yeah there were a lot of there were a lot of close calls you know oh it was it was impossible management changes things like this i mean just the lineup that you have is really impressive i i was really impressed when i had heard about it and finally it was like well here it is you know here's the, the and it was like it's wow. not just talk anymore yeah. it's actually a, it's actually a, a <laughs> thing that this. you can hold in your hand now yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, there's, there are some people that I have in mind for the next, you know, the next project. Uh, and, and so each of these, are, are each of these tracks unique to the, to the album? You said like, like Yoko gave you this unreleased. Most of them track. are exclusive wow. just to this. Yeah. Very good. So alternate mixes, um, unreleased, yeah. uh, live versions, demo versions, things like mm -hmm. that. Just to, to keep it, you know, to keep it interesting, especially for, for music fans, um, that want to collect, you know, that want to actually have and hold something that um, that contains unreleased material. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we've had we've had a lot of uh, good success with it. People are ordering physical CDs. We you know, we sign a lot of CDs. We do uh, these events um, and we get to meet the people you know, firsthand and mm -hmm. can see the enthusiasm. How uh, how long did this take you to? to make i mean between the, so when, yeah so between the you know. the idea of let's do this and combining this also the other component is the documentary film mm -hmm. that goes with it well just the, just take the cd just put in this but the, the whole thing was a okay. was a project together it was okay. all components so this this cd is actually the soundtrack to the documentary okay so the entire thing took five years yeah from start to finish because of everything because of life you right. know living in new york city it's you know everything's a pain in the ass and trying to get anything to happen uh in addition to everybody all these people are traveling all over the world at any given moment mm -hmm. so it's like they're on board and then sometimes the timing doesn't doesn't work out it's it's a big you know electric circus everyone's you know got all their things they're promoting moby had a book uh, -huh. uh yoko had an art oh, show right. in yeah. france um you know, pretenders uh did a tour uh joan did a tour you know everybody's you know busy doing stuff uh connor had a couple of new records come out uh bright eyes mm -hmm. so everyone's busy doing their thing so this was this was a nice way to kind of line everybody up and it it did take quite a while but it was completely worth well, it well i mean uh, for for an undertaking like this with like you said the documentary yeah yeah just in conjunction it seems like five years is pretty pretty good i mean that's it felt like 15 considering the people yeah. you got together here yeah yeah we did all right for five years mm -hmm. uh I mean, you have you have not only do you have the logistics of putting this thing physically together, right? You, I mean, you have legal things and contractual and stuff, contractual. getting distribution, mm -hmm. getting you know pressing physically pressing the CDs, um, getting things where they need to be at a certain time. Uh, we had a distributor in the UK and Europe, so we had to get you know a thousand CDs mm -hmm. to start off with to Europe. 
So there's a, there are a lot of moving parts to making it happen. And then you went into the studio. You produced this yourself, right? You, yeah. You put it together and put yeah, the compilation absolutely. together. And yeah, so, so uh, some of these were collabs that I did uh, with the artists, and then some of them were um, tracks that they already had and recorded and, and sent to me. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a like hobbled together in whatever way we could get all these people together. It would be great to do a We Are the World where we're all, you know, in the same place at the same time. But that's it's physically impossible. And a, and a little known fact, folks, um, on the inside cover here, Neil, in his kitchen, got a lamb, a chicken and a and a little piglet. Uh, in my kitchen, uh, in, in in your kitchen on the table. To but take they're, that alive. Photograph. they're alive. They're right, alive. Right? Yeah, yeah, they're not. Yeah, yeah they're no, not going to be cute, eaten. Uh, I don't know if they can see it, but there's a cute little. There's an insert in there as well insert. with some more cute animals and. Oh yeah, yeah. And inside there. Well, that, it's uh, well, congrats. Oh, wait, wait. Because they the, the yeah. Insert. So the thing is, is that you know, if you can see, the it. animals want to live just like people do. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So t so. Uh, Talk a little bit about um, just being vegan, the vegan lifestyle for folks out there who are not, or yeah. in, in many cases, who are uh, people who are vegan curious. Right. So, without getting too heavy-handed, sure. Um, yeah. You know, it's it it starts it starts with just the way you think about things. When did you um, become plant-based? So uh, animal rights. It's it start uh, initially um, in 1991. Um, I was in a band with a guy mm -hmm. who was a vegetarian, and in the back of my mind, it had always occurred to me that hey, maybe this isn't really right. Eating animals mm -hmm. is not the right thing, and I hadn't really become that close with somebody that had a lot of experience with it. And, you know, when you're in a band, you're, you know, it's like you're in a street gang together. You know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you go into war together, right? Uh, so I really, uh, I really looked up to Ron, who was my drummer at the time. Uh, we had a band called Spirits and Sin, which became Sin Corporation, which was mentioned earlier there. Mm -hmm. um, and within a couple of years, I had started doing more activism stuff. The more I learned about the mistreatment of animals in so many different ways, the more came out. So it's it's it didn't it didn't really fall on top of me necessarily as like a big heavy burden. It kind of started with a thought and then the next step and then the next step. And then within a couple of years, uh, I went vegan. I learned about the dairy industry. I learned about um, the egg industry. Just again, factory farming, factory farming in general, sure. you know, a lot of uh, mass agricultural production, things like this. Um, but there are a lot of great resources now. You know, back then, you know, you, you got a flyer or you got a PETA book or you got something or right. you read Diet for a New America or... You know, really have uh, the, the web or... Or, or you got... You know. uh, uh, there was a book uh, called The Sexual Politics of Meat. You know, there was another one that was happening around then. And one of the guys that's, that I play with in War Show Angels was in Consolidated. So the drummer of Consolidated, and they were a, they were a vegan activist band. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I learned a lot of stuff from them initially, and then I ended up playing with them. So it was pretty cool. Were you were you in uh, in the early '90s and uh, starting to go in that in the music and and the vegan community? Were you in Portland at the time or New York? I or? was actually in Arizona at the time. Okay. I was going to school at ASU, Arizona mm -hmm. State University and got into a, a scene of people that was more into industrial and electronic and gothy kind of stuff. Um, and I noticed a lot of these industrial bands were animal rights advocates, as of Skinny Puppy and Consolidated, as right. I mentioned before. Right. Um, so that kind of brought me into that, you know, into that area like, hey, there are musicians that are that are doing this. And I liked a lot of different kinds of music. Um, at the time I was in an industrial project mm -hmm. um, doing um, heavy guitars and synth and you know, vocals and it, it was pretty cool. Back, you know, wax, wax tracks records kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it really, it just gradually over time became like, hey, wait a minute, 
I'm an activist. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting you're talking about like the Arizona industrial scene because uh, the reason I asked about Portland is I've recently been reading about the early uh, animal activists and vegan community, yeah. which came out of really was pushed by the punk scene yes. and the band scene in Portland. That it's like all these, yes. you know. Dirty punks. Yes. Who, so you go back and you, you look know, at yeah. So just, you go back and you look at the mm-hmm. damned. You look at Buzzcocks. You yeah. look at and Crass, especially like very very yeah. activist. And a lot of that stuff, it just a lot of that stuff melded together because I was interested in so many different kinds of music. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as as far as the the activism stuff, that that just gradually grew over time. It may it started with a couple different decisions here and there. And mm-hmm. then I couldn't help myself. You know, it's like something needed to be done for these animals. And there's that there's that punk aesthetic where it's like, you know, by any means necessary, you know, like get this stuff to happen. Well, yeah. And you're in a, you're in a, especially like you said, it's a very strong when you're in a band, when you're, I mean, you're doing something artistic, you've got a vision and then you're with, with other people yeah, who are other musicians and they're, you know, they've got this philosophy, this lifestyle, and it's a very strong yeah. influence, strong it's definitely, positive influence. It's definitely an undercurrent, and and I didn't want to be in a political band or a, you know. Right. Uh, I just wanted to make music, and when some of these, maybe the issues will come up, maybe they won't. You know, it's it's basically well, just, it's for, it's not a vegan band. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we're vegan and you're not, and, yeah, you know. For me, there's this cool, was a surprise, you yeah. know, when I was like, oh, the pun- it was a surprise, but it wasn't a surprise. Right. It was like, oh, I didn't really realize that there was a strong subculture here. Yeah, huge. But now it makes sense. Punk and post-punk. Right. Lots of it. Right. Now it makes sense, and I can see why that yeah progressed and and that in that's that's a positive because it's it's saying that if you're not. Uh, a, a vegetarian or plant-based that yeah. you're not being beaten over the head with it each and every time if you're going to someone's show or whatever. Right, yeah. yeah. And I think Consolidated was more like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Meat Beat Manifesto was, you know, they were very political and uh, vocal about the, mm-hmm. you know, animal advocacy. Um, and it does, it has a time and it has a place. Well, when I was, um, you know, listening to Joan Jett or The Pretenders or whatever, it's not I, about, it, it yeah. wasn't, out front there no. in an interview later you'd go oh that's what that person is about yeah and they're exactly. speaking about it you know exactly but i'm not the music isn't necessarily about it although there might be one or two sure. songs here or there sure. that you know that touch on it because it, it's going to come out it has to come out somewhere um and yeah. then when they voc- when they vocalize how they feel about things that's you know that's when the artist can actually make a huge stamp and can say and can say something when they have people's attention like mm-hmm. hey you like my music great right well i have something to say also mm-hmm. you know so that's it's uh, it can be very beneficial for everybody yeah i i think that's that's the for me that's always been a positive thing is like you said if you like my music you like what you're doing and yeah, yeah. by the way um, you know, it's like the the positive influence. It's like uh, living by example. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at this person. I I admire, yeah. like you said, yeah. y- your your bandmate. You admired that person. Yes. And so, it, the best influence is what you admire, he, what you yeah. want to be. And he never hounded me about you know anything right. really. It was just it was just it was a natural attraction, um, and then over time it just kind of. I guess it all culminated into this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. definitely into this project. Yeah. So, um, and we wanted to mention that you're doing two uh, screenings. Yes. Uh, I think of the Home on the Range uh, documentary. Well, I think one's at 11 a.m. on Saturday. 11 a.m. on Saturday and 2 p.m. on Sunday. Right. At and it's at the Oregon Convention Center. Oregon Convention Center. I think we said Expo Center earlier, but it's Oregon. That's Convention. That's somewhere else. That's not. Yeah. I, I haven't been here for a while. Uh, and this this is like the big, big, big veg yearly veg fest yes it's, it's a big shindig it's been running for a long time so yeah yeah it's it should be great and i'm i look forward to um, there's a lot of great guest speakers and food sampling of oh yeah there's products lots of food. And, <laughs> well i mean can you have a veg fest without like 
having some samples you think you have to have samples Come on, you know it's like and it's all like non, i'm just there for the free samples not animal really well but you're 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 selling the cd yeah we have a we have a table there a and booth. cfei has a booth so we have t-shirts that, t-shirts. Help, that help fund the organization buttons. do you have buttons we have buttons oh. we have tote bags we have free uh food gift bags we're giving free out free food yeah all we right. have free food uh lundberg farms we have uh some raw revolution we have some ch- vegan chocolate chip cookies and we have mm. some vegan jerky so we're just giving out all kinds of stuff to help people um see what you know plant-based food is all about yeah th- okay so um so a little bit about myself <laughs> because that's what it's about right? enough I, about me what do you think about well, me? well let me tell you um no uh, uh i realized last month uh early september i have been plant-based diet for five years it was like my Wonderful. five year anniversary congratulations yeah yeah and how do you feel i feel great yeah never never would it's a good decision yeah yeah never would consider yeah, anything else absolutely it's it's like once you're there you're just you're there what were the reasons that you initially um started doing that it, it's very similar story to 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 yours yeah again same thing um always something in the back of your head uh when i was in high school i was doing uh i went to this Catholic high school uh-huh. and but then I had this reformed nun like they didn't wear the habit or anything they just look like a typical did, did they like hit your, your did they hit your knuckles no, with a no, ruler see, or anything like that like, totally no, okay. like like hey wow yeah and it was like hey I want to read some Buddhism and stuff she's like yeah wow that's great okay. go, go do it you know like one of those kind of like you know they have fast and loose with the rules yeah yeah, yeah kind okay. of liberal you know just like no no anything's cool just bring, okay. bring it to me the, if you have questions conversations and then she's like hitting me with these really far out liberal uh-huh. Catholic theologians and stuff check this guy out you know the church isn't sure about they sure did a number on you didn't they well it was good it wasn't like (laughs) slap you and beat you up and you know praise jesus and all that stuff nothing wrong with that but anyway uh so 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 i did that and so i i I did a lot of i was curious about islam and Mm -hmm. buddhism Mm -hmm. and all the stuff that goes on outside of this wonderful little insular yeah america that we have yeah um, and, and, and it just always kind of struck me. I also, I also was the kid. Okay. I was the kid in Sunday school that said, um, question about that souls and heaven and then the killing and the animals. I was right. that kid. Hurting living beings yeah, and, it would be like, and things sh- like shut that. Up. Thou shalt not this shut up. and thou shalt shut up. not that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, did you ever see one of those, um, little films that like PETA put out? Um, I, that showed I, I, that showed a little yeah. that showed just enough of the reality of it. That's that's also another good way to get people have, to realize to shock them into right. like, hey, you know, this is happening. I have a I have I've I've seen a little tiny bits of it. I yeah. have a hard time with it. I, yeah, I, that's I the point. Can't. That's the whole point. I, I'm 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 like you, you know, it's kind of like war. I know it's bad. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need to see film of it. I and know if, I know what happens, and 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 so factory farming and, mm-hmm. and slaughterhouses and all that. It's like, oh no, I know you know it's the there, but people in, don't think right? about it being there because if they knew it was there, they wouldn't be part of doing that. That's, Interestingly that's what I enough, feel. and this may tie into your your film as well. Uh, I'm getting a lot of people, who uh, and my daughter included who are seeing those films yeah. in school right now. Yes. And uh, in fact, a friend on Facebook just a day or two ago posted my son, who's an athlete. He's, he's a big athlete in high school. He, he was going vegan. And, and, and they watched a film mm-hmm. in school, and he and his buddy, and they're athletes. These, these are strong. Yeah, you know. there's, a, there's a huge uh, surge of plant-based yeah. athletes right now weightlifters and athletes Damon a lot yes Miller, yes just uh last month on my kind of vegan anniversary had posted on instagram that yeah. he was uh going into a plant-based vegan yeah. diet uh for uh, health and weight loss and right. getting strong right. and there's this whole people immediately come out and they go you're an athlete you can't you can't you cannot you need you must have meat and all this which is research says 
Yeah, not true. people aren't ever really going to agree on it. And even uh, some people would say some some hardcore vegans will say, oh, well, you, you know, mm-hmm. you're not doing it for the right reasons and you're just doing it for yourself and you're not doing it for the animals and which is, you know, there's one side of it. But I say any any reason that you decide not to continue causing death and harm to animals for whatever yeah. reason that is, is a good reason. Well, if you're going to stop yeah. eating animals for whatever reason, I think it's a good reason and for, my, for the animals. My initial the, reason yeah. five years ago was just health. It right. was like, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm not so down on this anyway, you know, and so and I'm I'm hanging out with uh, a few musician friends. Right. And they're vegan. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, you want to go out to lunch? And it's like, well, you know, you can order what you want. I'm you know, I'm like, no, I'll just when in Rome, let's just. I'm I'm totally cool. Let's let's have let's have the the plant based stuff. I, I I'm, yeah. There's you know, there's been a huge you know there's been a huge growth of that industry. You know, a lot of companies are realizing that hey, there's money to be made in this type of food, and it's a it's a mainstream thing now. You can fl- is, you know I flew yeah. on an airline here last night, and now there's vegan options on that airline. You know, right. Ten years ago, there wasn't. That's that's the lucky thing. I think it came late later in my life for me because it was just my culture where i was growing up it it just it just you'd even bring up the idea of you know other cultures and stuff and they'd be like whoa what are you yeah (laughs) Um, in the united states of america at this time you know there are so many options yeah it's it's i i i you know luckily stepped into it at the sweet spot yeah because now it's it's i've been to these events and things and there's people making making non-dairy vegan cheese like it's aged it's there's there's like oh well i guess there's nothing here now that i'm gonna miss uh, there's a saying you know. that says uh, anything you can do i can do vegan yeah there's yeah. a saying that's well going that's, around, that's you know? and it's true and people are using their background and their creativity mm-hmm. and coming up with just the most you know phenomenal things i've ever seen we we travel around to these veg fests you know all over the place and it's great to see what every you know everyone's take on these different items um it's 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 totally phenomenal i do i do the uh, i like southern cooking and yeah. i do i do the uh the comfort food yes so i've taken all my recipes and veganized them so i've got my gumbo yeah. My vegan gumbo. Yeah. I've got uh, vegan jambalaya. I've got, I make, uh, I love making paella. I, yeah. Because like one of the, oh, it's like, okay, you just, okay, what what am I going to do here? How am I going to, let me figure this out. It's, There's, it's like, I saw, a, I it, saw you know? a vegan cookbook that had, that that was yeah. the, that was the theme. Um, there's a lot of different great places. Um, there's a place that I went to in Detroit that was doing vegan soul food. Mm-hmm. Oh Yeah. Sp- yeah. <laughs> you know, it was great. It's great. Who doesn't like soul food? Soul I mean, food. Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just. And there's a new one that's in Harlem now that I haven't been to yet mm-hmm. uh, that I'm going to check out when I get back. But. Uh, so, Portland, speaking of which, because now we're talking about food and all yes. that. So, Portland is a huge vegan place. Like we talked about the background in that. And then you're you're living in did you, Brooklyn? No. No, you're from Brooklyn. You're you're living. I'm living in Long Island City. Long Astoria. Island City. So it's just across that Queensboro Bridge there. But you don't think of New York as being so vegan, but oh, you th- of course you think of New York as being vegan. It's yeah. probably one of the biggest vegan cities in the whole world, uh, according to uh, the ranking. They mm-hmm. ranked you know the best vegan cities in the whole world, and L.A. was one, and New York was two. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Just because we have 200 vegan restaurants there. Wow. That's it's and it's I, a variety you, of all sorts of yeah, things. Yeah, anything you want. Mhm. You mm-hmm. know, at 24 hours a day practically. Yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, that's it's definitely a good place and Portland's a great place for it and I think now more so than ever. Mm-hmm. Um when I lived here, you could get vegan options at a lot of places, but there wasn't always just a dedicated vegan only restaurants, which I see a lot more of now, which is 
which is great. There's and there's, a, there's places I definitely am going to visit while I'm here. Yeah, to t- take advantage of my time here. There's, there's a, there's a. It seems like every new restaurant that pops up lately in Portland is like, a, it's either vegan fully or very, I think very. They're covering vegan their bases. They friendly. have, you know, people are demanding this food. Yeah, you know, so a lot of restaurants that are, you know, omni restaurants are at least providing, you know, a vegan menu or vegan items that are labeled as such. Because people are asking for it, it's supply and demand. You know how many how many blockbuster video stores do you see on the corner right. you know, yeah. anymore? None. So when when a demand goes away, and there's a demand for something else, then that's what that's what people are going to fill. And again, there's people are doing a lot of great things with their creativity, putting into these vegan cheeses, um, vegan barbecue sandwiches, and vegan cakes and donuts and. It's, donuts. There's the yeah, all of it. Mm. I, I, I'm not a big donut. I'm not a big sweet fan. Donuts, but but you could have one. But yeah, yeah, it, it, yes. And um, it's there if you need it. That's the thing is that if you wanted a donut, yeah. you could have a vegan donut, and yes. it wouldn't. And 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 not only a vegan donut, but I would say the best donut I've ever had in my life. I was like, oh my, this is. And I could. And it was a have, vegan donut. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. did you get it? Dough donuts. Okay. There you uh, go. These gals, they make yeah. just the, 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 I mean, I, I, again, I was like, not only is this a vegan thing and I had two halves of, I couldn't like finish the whole thing. I was like, you know, but it <laughs> Please. was, I had two, it, uh, two samples and I said, not only is this a vegan donut, this is the best donut I've ever had. Yeah. Like, I'll, cause I, I used to, you if know, you, you grew g- up and if you, you gave that you know, donut to somebody and didn't say anything, they wouldn't know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't, know. They wouldn't say it. vegan, non-vegan this, yeah. just say, this is a good donut. Yeah. And that's yeah. the whole thing about food these days. It's like this food tastes good. And then you leave it at that. And it's, it's great because yeah. the stuff is there. It's available. If people want it, we have, you know, we have the internet, anyone can learn anything immediately right. about anything within 30 seconds. Yeah, and I, it's there in front of you. I think I think that's a super good point. Is is now it's gotten to the point where it's like don't even say anything, just no, you don't need to. Just here, have that. This Do is you good. like it? Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what I did when I first did the thing, and I made paella, and I said I'm gonna just not say anything. You know, it's like oh, yeah. it's it's like the when I grew up the the old coffee commercials. You know? Yes. It's like they're drinking the they're drinking the coffee. It's like this is uh, good coffee. This is good coffee. It's decaffeinated. And it's like whoa. <laughs> it's That's Miss, a little bit different from a plant based diet. Mrs. Mrs. Olson. Yeah. Yeah. Folgers. Oh, we. I, ha- I have a whole <laughs> reel of the most sexist 1950s commercials that are all Mrs. Olson's and we're going to play it on the other show at some point. It's a plan. I mean, they're all up, you know, like you said, there's everything on the internet. Yes. YouTube is your friend. Yes. And you're watching these going, and your enemy. Wow. You're just, yeah. It's you know, the cause and the solution to all of life's problems. Yeah. Apparently YouTube. in the fifties, the biggest problem men had was their wives making them good coffee. That was a big problem, probably, and shaving in your car was another big problem. I mean, you just want you just want one of these ladies at some point in the commercial to look over and go, "Why don't you make your own damn coffee?" You know, it's like, yeah, you know. But Mad Men, you know that. Sure. Whatever. The fifties. Eisenhower, rock and roll. Anyway, um, so VegFest, you got all this stuff going on. Uh, is there anything? else that that uh that kind of you're you've got uh in your head planned or you just uh ready to enjoy the weekend and i'm gonna and en- veg fest i'm gonna enjoy the weekend here and then next week we go to the texas veggie fair in dallas yes um and then i'm back in new york for a week or two and then i go to hong kong and we have an event in hong kong uh, doing the same thing. It's a screening. I'm going to do an acoustic performance. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, same idea. Now, did you do? Did you do a, a, a concert, a, min, a little concert in the U.S. or is that just gearing up for Hong Kong? You're not doing one this weekend. No, this is this yeah. one. We're doing film screenings. Mm-hmm. Um, the Hong Kong one just turned out to be a film screening and a performance. Cool. So I'm going to just do a, a solo acoustic War Show Angels performance cool. along with that as well. Well, that'd be fun. When's that? When that you... is November eighteenth. 
So you'll be you'll be doing this all uh, yes all through the end of the year, and the and the the CD selling selling well, getting getting as traction. well as the CD can sell in 2017. Yeah, you know I think people it, it's it's really it's a donation here. You get a CD. You yeah. may not have a CD player. You could download the CD. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, maybe people just it. feel sorry for us. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're just taking pity on me and all my hard work. I, you know, it's hard. I don't know if I'd take pity on a CD that has like you know Joan Jett and the Pretenders and Moby, Yoko Ono. If there's like, any, that doesn't seem like feeling sorry. If there's any way I can, that seems beat, pretty a list to me. If there's any way I can beat myself up about something, I'll find it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, um, I, I know when I was like going, oh, we're going to have Neil on here. And it was like, whoa, look at this CD Neil made here. <laughs> it was like, yeah. Look yeah. At it. There's some people on there. Yeah. A few. You should, you should know the ones that got away. I can't even tell you. Right. The three well, that got be, away. That'll be, that'll be the next See what I can do project. for the next one. Those people are apparitions. You can't even find them. Yeah. So are you, are you going to, uh, the documentary, is that going to be released on a disc or a Blu-ray or So something? the documentary is, the reasoning behind releasing that documentary is it's open source. So we have it available on YouTube. It's on the mm -hmm. Compassionate Farming website. It's on the Home on the Range Benefit website. We don't, we didn't want to sell it. That was the whole the whole thing is that we just wanted it to be available it. for people to to see it. Um, and then we do these screenings and it's nice to meet all the people in person. Um, so if you if you if we come to your town and there's a screening, um, you know, that's that's one great way to check it out. The other way is just, you know, going on the Internet and typing in home on the range benefit and that would show up. And you can just watch it on Vimeo has it, YouTube has it. Um, it's street, just streamable from multiple sources. And we just wanted it to be, we wanted it to be available for everyone, no matter where they are. We have a little bit of it, just a little preview of it right here on, on YouTube. It's got some nice aerial footage of the farms and, and whatnot. So that's yes. that's up on your YouTube channel. And that channel. took a while to put together, let oh, me yeah. tell you. I, I know. You ever make a film? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Hey, you haven't you haven't you haven't made a film in a while. How about how about doing this one? Yeah, yeah. No, there's some really nice stuff on there. I wanted to. Yeah, we got some good show. shots. We we filmed on location at Catskill Animal Sanctuary. Yeah. Um, and interviews. Interviews and... with Kathy Stevens, with Nellie Mackay, with mm -hmm. Princess Superstar, um, uh, Karen Ellis Ritter from. Uh, CFEI and Joshua Ritter from CFEI. Um, some really, really, it's actually, it's in kind of an uplifting, hopeful film. It's 19 minutes long, 20 with the credits. Um, and it tells you what you can do in a positive way. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not showing you what a horrible person you are for doing this and this. It's, you know, it's giving you solutions and inspiration to make change. Yeah, here's, yeah, there's, you've got a lot of farm footage and, and all that in here. That's that's great. Wow. That's, it looks the thing looks great, by the way. Thank you. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just wanted to show a little bit of that and Yeah, so we'll like be said, showing folks, it this weekend. Yeah. Come to the the Veg Fest. It's uh it's I can't remember I think if you have one of these Oh, ten dollars a day, seven dollars for students and seniors, so it's cheap. And there may be a Groupon Super. type coupon Super offer cheap. online. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty inexpensive. You can This eat, is not like expensive thing to you go could to. eat more free food than that would you know than you would pay yeah you can it's you, worth it you can go to this thing and just go hungry don't you, you could even put some in your pocket if you felt like you were getting ripped off <laughs> actually you can I, I hear that home on the range booth you could those put extra cookies in your pocket they are pushovers if they're looking the other <laughs> way the i would just way, put yeah sells, just extra go, hey, cookie i'm interested in the cd tell me, tell me more, more about, about this, this and then the cookie goes into the pocket and yes. then someone's got their like exactly oh, yeah yeah you watch yourselves. You might need some security. I don't know. But uh, it's a that good event. That should be great. Lots of kids. Um, they also have uh, one of the things about this is they have. Uh, it's a family event. So there's, yes. ki there's kids activities. Uh, yeah. There's guest speakers. There's uh, it's, demonstrations. It's everything. Yeah. It's a it's kind of. Cooking G demos. GPG event. It's, it's for kids. Oh, yeah. Kids. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no like hard R kind of vegan stuff. I don't know what that would be, but I can imagine it. Maybe not. I don't know. But they, 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 they have people here who are like, uh, 
uh, uh, they give talks on the health benefits. They've got there, doctors. Yeah, there's and doctors, nurses. scientists, things like that. So the uh, one thing about it is if you go there and you're like, okay, my kids. People that athlete. actually established farm animal sanctuaries. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good guests. Yeah. In fact, I, I mentioned this to my friend. I said, hey, by the way, this weekend, if you're, you know, you're not doing. If you have nothing to do at all. Take the kid over Think there about and, it. Yeah. And you'll learn. You, you could always go there and ask lots of questions to people. Yeah, or just the try the food. Just, whatever just, and, just try know. the food. It, you know, that's that's the gateway right there is yeah. trying the food, seeing how great it tastes. And then, you know, kind of the veil is lifted. And then, you know, depending on how much information you want to learn or not, it's there. It's all available there. We had this wonderful... Uh, vegan bakery lady who's out of new york i can't remember her name off the top of my head uh maybe someone would remind you and and she gave a talk fran 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 costigan i saw fran costigan so we saw her at the hudson valley veg fest which was not too long ago and she did a cooking demonstration yeah yeah she does bakery she does yeah cakes and stuff yep and i remember fran we were doing an interview and she was talking about or, or, or talk or she was talking about you know everyone says oh vegan is weird plant yes. is weird. did you have a salad today yeah. did you have some vegetable you know i mean yeah you might add things to it but but you you already eat plant human beings already eat plant-based food yes period yeah so unless you're i mean i've known a few people who didn't they were like <laughs> well pizza is plant-based you know i mean well tomatoes uh, and wheat and you know whatever you make the crust out of and whatever uh, you decide to put on top of it you know i, li- I literally have known a couple people who were <laughs> completely and like they didn't eat one stitch of like a plant yeah it was like how, like in the, how do you do that even <laughs> it's called an oreo atarian yeah i think <laughs> i it's like <sighs> i'm with not to get but into that's details, the, but it's like, what's your constitution Aside from all like? the chemicals, there's actually, yeah. there are some plants in there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it, it amazed me. Anyway, uh, super exciting, and uh, um, I can't I can't wait. I'm, I'm excited. I, find, I get to go this year. Great. Because there's yeah, always something, be, yeah. some conflict or whatever, and so this year, I'm going. I'm going to be there. Wonderful. We're gonna we'll hang see out. you there. We're going to hang out and see your talk and all that. And Wonderful. Figure stuff out. So, I'm excited. It'll be a big. Uh, it'll be a big happy shindig with lots of oh, happy yeah. shiny people. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Neil, for uh, uh, for this examination. And uh, absolutely, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, clean bill of health. So, uh, we'll uh, you'll be fine until the next. Uh, podcast colonoscopy um uh, that yeah. doesn't sound good yeah but you're healthy you're vegan okay so, so i'm so yeah. see you've you already got got that going clean for bill of health so so basically i don't need to make a follow-up appointment or anything no, I'm all set. no. okay great no i'll see you no. in a year then yeah exactly yeah <laughs> exactly so uh thanks a lot and yeah uh, thank you and uh good luck on uh on the uh home on the range uh we'll uh replay that little bit here with uh neil Cohn, home in the range we'll put the links down great in the show notes go get it it's uh, looks like a lot of fun uh see you later
Thank you.